May we have the time of confession of faith. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. May we all greet one another. May we remember the blood of the cross. With that, the title for today is the grace given by communion. Today is the Sunday that we will celebrate the Holy Communion, which was suspended due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Even after the on-site worship services were restored, people wore masks to prevent the corona of infection. That is why we're not able to hold the Holy Communion service for some time. Now, as we can wear a mask voluntarily, and as our church uses disposal cups during the Holy Communion service, we have no problems. You can put it in your pocket or you can throw it away. It's disposable, so there are no problems. As we have not been able to hold the communion for three days, three years, today we will choose a text related to the Holy Communion for the word of the Gospel of Mark that we are examining every Sunday to testify the word. This is because we can live a biblical life of faith only when we properly understand the spiritual meaning of Holy Communion. Above all, the Holy Communion contains the amazing grace given to us spiritually through Jesus Christ. In John Calvin's book, Institutes of the Christian Religion, John Calvin, the religious reformer, summarizes the grace we have received into three categories. The first grace is the Word. What we must receive in the walk of faith that is most important is the Word. The Lord has given us the Word, and He teaches and guides us through the Word. The Word. The second is sacrament. Sacraments include baptism and the Lord's Supper. The Word ends with us reading or hearing it, but the Eucharist is something that we see with our own eyes and experience with our senses. The fact that you have become the person of the kingdom of God and that you have been forgiven for your sins. Augustine said that sacraments are visible form of invisible grace. We cannot see it. We cannot see the spiritual world. But how we can see it is by the Holy Communion. The role of the Holy Communion is the same as the Word. It reveals Christ to us and helps us realize the grace in Christ. You can think of it as an audiovisual word. The third grace given to us is the Holy Spirit. The Another Comforter, the Holy Spirit, works in our hearts and allows the Word and sacraments to enter. When we read and listen to the Word, our knowledge alone does not provide us with grace. Even when we receive the Holy Communion, if we only feel it with our hands, eyes, and lips, there is no grace for it. People will just say, Oh, it's good. Oh, some people say, oh, the cups are too small. Can we have more juice? That's not the meaning of it. It's not saying, oh, I want to drink only a little bit or a lot, that it's too sweet or too bitter. If so, there's no meaning in it. However, when you hear the word and receive the Holy Communion, if the Holy Spirit enlightens you and makes you realize and feel it, you will quickly realize the spiritual meaning of the word and Holy Communion and experience the amazing grace and love of Jesus Christ. And there was one testimony of someone who received baptism last Friday. He said the moment he went up there under the 
stage, he felt the Holy Spirit. That's the spiritual realization. It's the great love and grace that you must receive during the time of the Holy Communion. In fact, during the early church, the communion was held whenever believers gathered. Acts 2, 45 to 46. There were new believers every day. Nowadays, only baptized Christians can participate in the Holy Communion. However, at that time, everyone's allowed to participate in the Communion as a love feast. In front of God, giving worship to God, we have the love feast. So even if one does not receive baptism, they were able to gather and have this Holy Communion. What is important is that these words contain all the spiritual meanings of the Holy Communion. By becoming one with Jesus Christ, we can enjoy the blessings and joy of eternal life and live a life that testifies to that blessing. It has that meaning within. It is eating and drinking the body of Christ as the body of Christ. It's enjoying this blessing and going into this blessing. However, the essential meaning of the Holy Communion has been overlooked by the Catholic Church. They partake in the Communion every time they gather, but as the act has become centered around the ceremony itself, the meaning has been skewed. The Word and Communion should be given together, but they have excluded the Word and focus on the Communion itself. As a result, communion has become increasingly mystical and has eventually turned into something like an idol worship. They insist on the sacramental theology in the communion, claiming that when they eat the bread and drink the wine, it transforms into the flesh and blood of Jesus. Therefore, there are various, very cautious not to let the bread and wine fall onto the ground when calling communion the spiritual body. It is not just about worrying that the atmosphere of the ceremony will be disrupted, but rather by the fear of spilling or dropping the real body and blood of Jesus Christ onto the ground, committing a violation. Therefore, they handle the bread and wine carefully, allowing each person to come forward in line and place the piece of bread in their mouths to avoid any crumbs from falling. As for wine, unless it is a special case, only the celebrants drinks it, not giving it to the other believers. Only the Pope will drink it. In the end, by doing it this way, they have missed the spiritual essence contained in the communion. That's why the reformers not like the mystical communion of Catholicism, reformed it into a communion based on the word. This is called the doctrine of the spiritual presence. This also means that Jesus Christ does not physically come to the communion service, but spiritually participates in it. To elaborate further, it's a time for believers to realize once again that the fact that Jesus Christ comes as the Holy Spirit through the communion and then express gratitude and testifying to his blessings. In the name of the Lord, I bless you that through today's passage, I hope that all believers of you in church will understand the essential meaning of the communion that Jesus personally instituted and experience the amazing new grace bestowed by God. 
Number one, restoration of faith of the Passover. Matthew fourteen twenty two. Today's text refers to the biblical passage known as the Last Supper, where Jesus Christ is depicted at the center with his disciples seated on his sides and sharing the Passover meal. The mention of Leonardo da Vinci's painting of the Last Supper suggests that many people are familiar with this iconic representation. The text notes that despite the familiarity with the scene, the spiritual significance contained with it is often not well understood. It states that the Last Supper as recorded in the biblical text is directly related to the institution of the Holy Communion as Jesus established the communion ritual during the Last Supper. The expression as they were eating in the text refers to a time when Jesus and his disciples were eating the Passover meal. After verse 12, it is noted that Jesus prepared a place with his disciples to share the Passover meal together. Just as Lunar New Year or Thanksgiving is the biggest festival for us, the Passover is considered to be the most important festival for the people of Israel. It's the same right now. The Passover is a festival commemorating God's grace and the leading the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt. In the book of Exodus, God allowed nine disasters to Egypt through Moses to release the Israelites from the 430 years of slavery. It has all been prophesied. The moment that the blood covenant would be lost, to Abraham he said, your future descendants would go to slavery for 400 years. But 30 years were added onto that. At the time, Pharaoh's heart was so hardened. However, the tenth and final disaster was sent, which was the death of every firstborn for both animals and man. The first human or animal that was born. The only way to escape this was to apply the blood of the lamb on the doorpost. So at this time, there were cries throughout the whole nation of Egypt. At that time, all the Israelites applied the blood of the Lamb on their doorposts. The houses in Israel with the blood on the doorposts were passed over, avoiding the disaster, while all the Egyptians suffered from the disaster. This is where the word Passover originates from. The line of death was going around and having judgment. All the houses that had the blood, they were passed over. But as the Egyptians did not know this, this curse came upon them. Pass over means that the curse has been passed over that house. Ultimately, Pharaoh gave in and allowed the Israelites to leave after the last plague. It was allowed for them to leave. There were two million slaves. It was because his son had even died. 
Thus, the Passover is a festival to thank God for such grace. It holds significant spiritual meaning that Jesus intentionally entered Jerusalem during the period of the Passover to indicate the upcoming crucifixion. Although there is a superficial reason that many Israelites gathered in Jerusalem during the Passover period, ultimately it can be seen as emphasizing the spiritual meaning of the Passover and highlighting Jesus' ministry of crucifixion. Recognizing the mystery of the blood of the Lamb through the Passover is crucial. The blood of the Lamb symbolizes the atonement ministry of Jesus Christ. The Israelites were freed from the blood of the Lamb. Like so, men are cursed and destined for eternal destruction due to Genesis chapter 3 by being deceived by Satan. And the only way to escape from all curses is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, all issues of curses and sins were resolved and one can live a life of true liberation and freedom. That's what it's being said. That's why we believe in Jesus. Upon our busy time, that's why we give worship. It's because it's only by the blood of Jesus. All sin, all curses have been completely solved and we have true liberation and freedom. Hebrews 9.22 In the Old Testament, they had to kill the animals. And then, by the priest spreading that, blood they were forgiven in Hebrews 9:12 it emphasizes that Christ entered the holy place once for all by his own blood thus securing eternal redemption the moment that you believe in this we don't have to do it with the blood of the lamb or the ram. It's by but the blood of Jesus Christ. For those who believe in Jesus Christ, it's that the blood of Jesus must shed in our hearts throughout the week, being forgiven by the blood. After that repentance, you are forgiven. So that's why non-believers cannot understand it. Hebrews 10.10 10 underscores that it is through the sacrifice of Jesus, Christ's body that we have been sanctified. Even if we committed the sin, when non-believers look at us, we are sinners. We have very complex paths that person has gone to prison and had many divorces but he has become righteous this is something that is great Ephesians 1 7 clearly states in him we have redemption through his blood and forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace with that blood Nothing else in the world can solve the problem that we have, which is the problem of separation from God, the problem of sin, and the problem of Satan. Man's efforts are not needed. What if you make that effort? Not getting married and going to, to the mountains and shaving off your hair. Committing less sin. You'd think, oh, you're better off than that person, but no, you're like cockroaches. Sinners are all sinners. Only the blood of Jesus Christ can solve your fundamental problems. It is not done by man's efforts. That is why the reformer Martin Luther said, only 
blood flows when we squeeze out the Bible. When we squeeze out the Bible, there is blood. It sounds gruesome, but it's an accurate confession to express the core of the biblical message. It's only the blood. Martin Luther, the religious reformer, had said this. It is expressed in a very realistic way. This is the Passover faith that we need to recover, is to hold on to the blood covenant proclaiming in our lives and to pass it on from generation to generation. As the years go by, you can readily see the newspapers and mass media that the dark culture of the world is making it harder and harder to keep the children in faith. It's difficult to keep your faith. More and more, it's going to be difficult. Things that you would have not been able to think of the, in the past are happening right now. Recently, the Ministry of Education announced an economic support plan after the Korean SAT, saying that the key point is to strengthen prevention of education of deviant behaviors such as drugs and online gambling. It's to prevent this. In the past, alcohol, smoking, and violence prevention education was the main focus, but now it's not in that level. Now, the field's approach has completely changed. It's now drugs and online gambling. That is why the remnant movement utilizing the three-day weekend is so important. The Passover covenant must be firmly rooted down, especially this week there is the SATs, the college entrance exams. We have 130 remnants who are taking the SATs, so may all believers of the One Church pray intensively that the things that they have been praying and preparing for will all be remembered and that they would not be afraid. So when they first established the church, we had gathered all the parents and we had prayed for all the periods of the SATs all day we would pray together if they were on breaks we were on breaks because the SATs is one of the biggest life-changing moments. So may we be able to pray together as the children are taking this test, may we be able to come out to church and pray for them. I bless you in the name of the Lord that they may be evidence of them knowing why they have to go to the, the universities. It's so that they would be able to raise the platform to preach the gospel and may it be a partisan of missions and evangelization. May we all be sent out as the field ministries of the mi missionaries to witness to the cov as the witness of the covenant of the Passover of Jesus Christ in the fields. May they be the missionaries in the university field. May we be able to pray the prayer that God has no choice but to answer. Number two, the blood of covenant that we must have memory of. Verses 22 to 24. Jesus himself enacted the Holy Communion after the sermon. 
which we will do today as well. When Jesus had taken the bread and blessed them, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body. In Luke 22 19, it is more specific. It reads, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This is not bread, but it is my body. And later, after taking the cup and giving the prayer of thanksgiving, he says, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. It's the blood of the covenant. The blood of the cross symbolizes the blood that Jesus Christ would shed in the future to fulfill the covenant of life and salvation. So, through the communion, as we share the bread, we must live a life commemorating a sacrificial death of Jesus Christ, who became the bread of life. It's holding on to the new covenant and commemorating that. By partaking the cup, we are holding on to the new covenant established by the blood of Jesus Christ. It is crucial to live the life holding on to and commemorating this new covenant. The term new covenant signifies and promises that through the faith in Jesus Christ, anyone can be completely liberated from the power of Satan. Fully set free from sin and gain salvation. The gospel it is by salvation of faith. It is by faith. Satan and God knows that if you have true faith or not. Some people can say with their lips, but God is not deceived. Man can be deceived, but God cannot be deceived because he even knows your thoughts. He knows how many strands of hair you have. You must hold on to this fact and commemorate the meaning of Holy Communion. You must be able to know the meaning of Holy Communion. If not, it is like drinking sin. It does not, it is not done like that. Of the past is giving sacrifices of young lambs and offering their blood for forgiveness, but through the complete freedom provided by Jesus Christ. Clearly, in the understanding and commemorating this fact, should define the attitude of those participating in the communion. Particularly, the idea of commemorating implies in realizing the meaning embedded in it and conveying that meaning. This is concisely summarized in 1 Corinthians 11:26. May you, as the key figures of the team of three movement, bear the responsibility of comprehending the meaning within communion and spread it. I bless you in the name of the Lord to experience the response of the 237 Healing Summit, which seeks to transform all nations. This is the conclusion. Holy Communion can literally un be understood as the Holy Fellowship. In the other words, through the Holy Communion, we should be able to share the fellowship of love as a community united through the body of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2.13 Being brought near by carrying the cross, Jesus Christ became the reconciling sacrifice that removed the barrier between God and humanity. That's the meaning of Holy Communion. If through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ our relationship of God has been restored, then the barriers of relationships among the numbers of the members of the body, the united believers, should also break down. As you proceed with the Holy Communion service, I encourage you to demolish any barriers if they exist. May you be able to pray, say, may you be able to restore all interpersonal relationships. Because Satan makes it so that you would have disbelief, not being one. So I hope that we would all become one. We have many politicians here. And we had 
tea together in the morning. But what would happen if the North and South would become one? Who is it that does not want us to become one? Satan makes it so that we would have miscommunications and not be able to become one and completely be put apart. I hope that every household, institution, evangelistic group, and the entire church can enjoy the blessing of complete oneness in Jesus Christ. One in the field, one in the family, one in the ministries. It's not even been long. But I hear rumors that he has made everyone to become and have oneness in the political field. May we have the same prayer. Lord, may we be able to have oneness in the field. It's not saying, oh, this person did that or this and do favors of Satan, but may the community of celebrating the restored faith of the Passover, the covenant community holding on to the blood of the covenant, advance to become a ministry as a missionary community creating the 237 missions. Maybe that covenant unity during the time of this Holy Communion, leaving behind the masterpiece. Now we will do the communion service.